Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to congratulate uh, the Honourable Member from Workington for his maiden speech, and I hope that he, like a newbie like me, um, enjoys his time in this place and is a strong voice for the people of Workington. Mr Deputy Speaker, yesterday I spoke in the, the Finance Bill debate about job creation. I spoke about the importance of not only creating jobs but secure jobs that put the needs of workers at the heart of the economy rather than profit. It seems rather appropriate that I have the opportunity to speak in the child poverty debate today because as we all know the government's shameful record on employment and workers' rights is one of the main drivers behind child poverty. <laughs> to be honest, I've absolutely no faith that the government understands the issue of child poverty in any meaningful way. In the space of a month, I had the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care tell me that this government was committed to levelling up the North East. Yet, I also witnessed an Equalities Minister admitting from the dispatch box that they had not heard of the Marmot Report, mm -hmm. essential reading when looking to tackle health inequalities. Mm -hmm. And as one as a popular actor said in response, it's like a vicar not having heard of the Bible. <laughs> Over the last decade, Conservative governments have systematically dismantled the progress that the last Labour government made on child poverty. Currently, four million children are living in poverty, with three million of these living in a household where at least one person is at work. In addition to this, the government's own Social Mobility Commission reports that there are 600,000 more children living in relative poverty than in 2012. This commission referenced the government's welfare changes as a key cause of this and have predicted that these changes, along with the impact of COVID-19, will only increase child poverty. While the Prime Minister might be confused as to whether the government has caused more child poverty, I am not. It's there in black and white, in those appalling figures, and quite frankly, it's an utter disgrace. <laughs> in recent weeks, we've also seen the government being forced <coughs> into a U-turn on free school means, meals after a campaign by a leading footballer, one of the people that the Health Secretary was telling to do their bit at the start of the crisis. Isn't it shameful that we have a government who have to be embarrassed into feeding hungry children? Yeah. Yeah. To top it all off, the government have reintroduced benefit sanctions in the midst of a global mm. pandemic and economic disaster. Welfare support from the government will be essential during the coming recession, yet the government seems more concerned with taking support away rather than supporting people in dire financial straits. How on earth does this help child poverty? And I just wish the government were as quick to sanction Dominic Cummins or the Secretary of State for Housing as they are vulnerable people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is clear from these decisions is that the government either fundamentally misunderstands the issue of child poverty or they simply do not care. I would ask the Minister which it is, but I suspect it's both. Unfortunately, this country now faces one of the biggest crises in living memory. There's a combined threat to public health and the economy, and the economy which must be tackled together. However, the government's tendency to view poverty as an issue with individual causes and their ignorance around the issue of health inequalities shows that they are poorly equipped to deal with this problem. When confronted with the rise in child poverty by the leader of the opposition, the Prime Minister denied the extent of the issue. To bluster and deflect would be one thing, but to deny that the issue exists is deeply worrying. How can the government be trusted to tackle this issue if they refuse to confront it and deny its existence? Yeah. Successive Conservative governments have made this problem worse. And that's not my opinion, it's a fact. What they must do now is admit they were wrong and change course. 
A starting point would be to accept the Social Mobility Commission's recommendation that the Treasury give the Office for Budget Responsibility the role of assessing the impact of the government's fiscal policies on poverty. <coughs> Sadly, I fear that under this government, child poverty will continue to rise as they simply do not recognise the problem exists or know how to solve it. And I can only hope that they prove me wrong. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.